Happy Easter redemption. He is risen. The father woke his daughter up at 5 a.m. He wrapped his jacket around her and carried her to the car. She wiped the sleep from her bleary eyes and realized how dark it was. He brought her to a mountain and carried her up to a cliffside where they sat and watched and waited. Suddenly, dawn began to break. Light crashing through the dark, brilliant colors bursting forth, glory streaming across the sky. Rays of light ricocheted through the atmosphere until reaching her retina. It was her first sunrise. She sat in awe next to her father, soaking in the grandeur, blown away by the wonder of it all. As daylight was established and the equilibrium settled, she turned to her father and said, do it again, daddy, do it again. Now, the funny thing about this scene is the girl thinks her father is the one causing the sun to rise. She thinks her dad has the power to bring forth the dawn. And how ridiculous is that? How crazy is that? And yet, as we come to Easter, the reason that we are all gathered here today, the father is the one who has made his son to rise His light, the light of the risen Jesus crashing through our darkness, his resurrected glory bursting forth upon our world. And now the risen Jesus turns to his father and says, do it again, dad, do it again. Bring my people up out from their darkness and into the light. Bring them out from the grave and from death into life. Make my resurrected glory shine upon them to know that death does not have the last word. You, Father, have the last word, and your last word is Jesus, the victorious light of the world. The title for this Easter message is Do It Again. Our Heavenly Father has the power to do it again. 2 Corinthians 4.14 says, He who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with him. The God who raised his son from the dead is out to raise you too. He's out to do it again in you. Now, earlier in verse six, 2 Corinthians 4, verse six, Paul says this. He says, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He's saying, the light has come. God has done it again. Now, when he says here that God who said, let light shine out of darkness, he's referring to page one of the Bible, Genesis 1, where God's first act of creation is to speak light into the darkness, the first sunrise. Light is a foundation for all creation. It is the bedrock upon which life is built. Without light, you and I, we could not see each other. Plants could not grow. Photosynthesis could not happen. Life could not thrive. Paul says here that the same God who spoke light into darkness has now shown in our hearts the light of the risen Christ, that he has done it again. He has shown light into darkness into our hearts. Where there was darkness within us, the Father is bringing forth the light of his risen Son, and it's glorious. In the light of the risen Jesus, he is warming our affections, transforming you and I from the inside out. Where can we go to see this glorious Light, you might ask, where can I find this radiance? That's a good question. And he says, it is found here in the face of Jesus Christ, in the face of the risen Son. If you want to see the light of God's glory, look at the face of the risen Jesus. 
If you are here this morning and you want to know what God looks like, look upon the face of Jesus. Paul says here that in the face of Jesus, we see the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, and it is radiant and it is beautiful. And so if you want to see the Father's new sunrise, then look upon the risen sun. God has brought his light shining forth out of darkness once more, and he wants to shine his light on you. You know, last month we were back in our hometown. We were back in Portland visiting family, and we had the chance to visit uh, my son's birth mom. So uh, one of our children is adopted, and over the years we have sought to build relationship with his biological mother, and it's been a beautiful relationship. And one of the things that was shocking when we spent time with her this last month was to realize that for the last year or so, she has been attending our old church, which was really cool. Now, there's a bit of a backdrop to this, right? So again, over the years, we have sought to build a relationship with her, and we have been so inspired by her, seeing her just do amazing things. She has broken free from addiction. She has uh, gotten clean and sober. She's off the streets and into housing. She's uh, thriving and gotten healthy and, and, and living well. And, and over the years, she's gotten married. And I, years ago, we actually had, I had the chance to officiate her wedding, which was beautiful. God did an amazing thing there, and even having the chance to do premarital counseling in the months prior and getting to know more of her story and that process, and so powerful, I think, for our son to know more of that backstory as part of his story as well, and, and it was so cute, actually. Our, our son got to be the ring bearer in the wedding for his biological mother walking down the aisle. It's beautiful. Well, over these years as well, her and her husband have met Jesus. And dude, they love Jesus, like all out love Jesus. He has gotten a hold of their life. Her husband, he's like watching all the Bible project videos and asking me questions about my sermon. And what does Jesus mean by that? What do you think about this? And dude, he's just, Jesus is so good. They're digging in. And so last summer when we were back home, uh, we went to church together and they were like looking for a church. And I was like, well, hey, why don't we go to our old church together? We'll meet up there and hang out after. So we go to our old church and we're sitting there and it was just beautiful. They loved it there. But one of the craziest things was they started seeing all of these old people that they had known from their life before on the streets. And there was this repeated interaction going like, whoa, 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 what? You, you, you too? You, you, you even encountered Jesus? And, and what, what, you too? And, and there was this one guy that they saw and they're like, dude, that guy, like five years ago, he was crazy. Like, he was like violent. Like, if you were walking down the street, you saw him, you like turn and walk the other way. Like, you don't want to go near him. But they're going like, you found Jesus. He's like, Jesus got a hold of my life. He's shown his light upon my darkness. And now my life has been transformed. And I asked friends and they're going, dude, that guy is the evangelist. He's like bringing, he's brought a dozen people to Jesus this year. And, was, and just going, whoa, the power of Jesus to transform lives. Now, also this last year, they found out they were pregnant. They had twins, they had twins coming into the world. And one of them in the womb, they found out, uh, was diagnosed with Down syndrome. And so they called us that week to process. And they said, man, you know, uh, all these people around us are saying that uh, we should get rid of her. But no, she's God's gift to us. This is our daughter. God has blessed us with her. And so we want to welcome her into the world. And so they welcomed her into the world. And just this month, she had heart surgery, four months old. And we were on the phone this weekend with her FaceTime, and we saw She's thriving. She's recovering from heart surgery. She's a four-month-old girl. She's doing well. And what struck me in that moment was that this one, who's become a part of our family, who years ago was on the brink of darkness, has now encountered the light and is caring for and bringing up new life. And when you talk to her, she would say, I have encountered, I have seen the light of God in the face of the risen Jesus, and it is glorious, and it is beautiful. And Jesus, he is alive, and he has encountered us in our darkness. He found me, she would say, when I was alone, and when I was addicted, and when I was broken, when I was on my own, when I was on the brink of it all, and yet he caused his light to shine. He brought forth now a place where we are experiencing peace and healing and life and community and all these things with others. The Father has raised his son from the dark and he's shining his light on me. And this is not just 
her story. This is your story and my story. This is why we are gathered here today is because the light has come. The light of God has come, and we have a father who loves to do it again, who says, I raised my son out from the grave, and I shone my light upon her darkness, and I want to shine my light on you, and on you, and on you, Victor, and on you, Jesse, and on you, Bradley, and on you, Sarah. God is going, I have love. I love doing it again and shining my light upon my children, on you, and on you, and on you, and on you. We are a people who have encountered the light of the glory of God in the face of the risen Christ. We are here because we are a people who have seen a great light, a people living in a land of darkness who have seen a great light, and we will never be the same. That is what Easter is all about. Now, you might find yourself asking, like, why does God do that? Why does does he love doing that again and again and again? Doesn't doesn't God get bored? Maybe he does that for some. Like, he's got to be selective, though, because God's busy and he's just tired of it. So why why does God do that? Well, I love G.K. Chesterton. He's a famous thinker from the early 1900s, but he has this, this thing, this observation he makes that always struck me. He says that it's actually a strength of children like God to want to do things over and over again. He says this of kids. He says, it is because children have abounding vitality, because they are in spirit fierce and free, therefore they want things repeated and unchanged. They always say, do it again, and the grown-up person does it again until he is nearly dead. (laughs) Any, (laughs) can I get an amen from any parents in the room? (laughs) For grown-up people are not strong enough to exult in monotony. He's saying it's actually a strength of children to rejoice in doing it over and over. It's a weakness in us as adults that we get bored of the glory and the beauty. But he goes on, he says this. Here's the point. He says, but perhaps God is strong enough to exult in monotony. It is possible that God says every morning, do it again to the sun, and every evening, do it again to the moon. It may not be automatic necessity, he goes on, that makes all daisies alike. It may be that God makes every daisy separately, but has never got tired of making them. He's saying God has the strength of a child to do the same thing, the beautiful thing and the glorious thing over and over again. And he concludes saying, it may be that he has the eternal appetite of infancy, for we have sinned and grown old, and our father is younger than we. (coughs) Our father is younger than we. What he's saying is that God delights to do it again. God tells the son, do it again, and the moon, do it again every day, and he doesn't get tired of doing the beautiful and glorious, and he doesn't get tired of doing it for you. The risen Jesus is alive, and he loves to shine the light of his glory upon you to bring you from light and to bring light and warmth and goodness to warm your affections, to transform you from the inside out. And when you encounter the light of the risen Jesus, it's glorious. It does that. It warms your heart. It changes and shapes your desires. It goes, Jesus, I want to actually be a different kind of person who lives in the light of your glory that I have seen in the face of you, Jesus, the risen Christ. The light has come. So look to Jesus. Look to him have the light of the risen sun shine upon you. Okay, well, what do we do, though, when the darkness still feels strong? Paul says here that God has shown his light upon our hearts, but there's still a lot of darkness outside surrounding us. That may be within, but we live in a world where there's darkness and tragedy and trial and difficult things we go through, and so What do we do when the darkness feels strong? I love in Daniel chapter 12, where in verse two to three says, the day is coming, the resurrection when the multitudes of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, 
some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. What he's saying is the light is coming. Not only that the light has come, but the light is coming. That not only that Jesus was raised, literally, a real glorified body 2,000 years ago, but that is a sign of what's to come, that what God has done for his son in raising him from the grave, he is going to do for you and for I and for the world, that we will be raised in the resurrected power of God. It says here, we will rise from the dust, those who sleep will awake. And this means that what happened to Jesus was not just a one-off event, but a foreshadowing of our future. That was the event of Easter, but this is the outcome or the end game of Easter, why he did it. <clears throat> if only Jesus was raised, is that really good news, right? Like if I'm playing with my kids in the pool who were yesterday, and let's say I'm you know, throwing one of them up in the air and it's going, yeah, do it again, laughing and splashing, do it again. And then one of my other kids comes up and they're like, do it again for me, daddy, do it for, do it for me, do it again, raise me up too. And I'm like, nah, that's just for this one, right? Not for you, only him, right? That's not good news for that child. That's gonna be like, dude, I'm bitter, I'm, you know, whatever. But it's the good news of the resurrection. It's not just that Jesus raised from the dead, and that's great for him, but too bad for you. You're gonna be in the ground forever. No, that because Jesus was raised from the dead, it's a sign of what God is going to do for you. Light is coming. Hope is alive because hope has a name, and it is Jesus. Jesus is alive, and that means that he will raise you like him to be with him. And Daniel says here that on that day, when they awake, that uh, <clears throat> those who are wise, that they'll shine like the brightness of the sky above. He's saying, we're gonna shine too, that this light that's coming, is gonna radiate from us, that the light of the glory of Jesus, it will shine not only in our hearts, but actually from our bodies, that we will have literally real, raised, glorified, resurrected bodies like Jesus, that we will be as he is. Now, Jesus is the brighter light, like the sun, but we will shine like the stars, it says. We will shine radiating the glory of Jesus. And yet he also gives a warning that for others, they will rise to shame and everlasting contempt. And here the picture is that, man, it will also reveal, the resurrection will reveal the darkness inside you, if that's your Story that for some, the darkness in them will be revealed and come through because resurrection means you can no longer hide from the face of God in the darkness of the grave. And this raises the question what kind of person are you and I becoming? Are we becoming a people of the darkness or a person of the light? Because daylight isn't good news for everyone. In 1977, there was a famous blackout in New York City where uh, three lightning strikes hit and they took out key elements of the power stations, the power grid, and so uh, it tripped circuit breakers, it knocked out transmission lines, and New York City went dark for a day. And crime skyrocketed in the darkness. It was widespread across the city. In Brooklyn, two blocks of Broadway were on fire and 35 blocks destroyed. In Crown Heights, 75 stores on a five-block stretch were uh, looted and damaged. In Bushwick, arson left 25 fires still burning the next morning. People were seen backing their cars up to stores, tying ropes to the grates, pulling the grates off, and then just pulling everything out from the stores. In the Bronx, 50 new Pontiacs were stolen from a car dealership. In total, 4,500 people were arrested. 550 police officers were injured in the mayhem. Over 1,600 stores were damaged and over 1,000 fires reported. The cost of the damage was estimated at $1.29 billion in today's terms because crazy things can go down in the dark. And I wonder, 
What kind of person are you becoming amidst the darkness of our world and our moment? Are you like one of those who is thriving in the darkness, relishing the anonymity of I'm in a time or a season where I can kind of do what I want and get away with what I want to and live for myself and keep God at distance and at bay because this is my time to shine? Because if so, Daniel says that's a trajectory that ultimately, with the resurrection, will lead to shame and contempt when the light comes. 1 Corinthians 4, 5 says that the coming of the resurrection, God will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. The day is coming when the sun will rise, so don't let the light be a judgment. The beauty of Easter is that you don't need to live in the dark anymore. The light has come and you can trade. He bore your darkness on the cross. On Good Friday, we celebrate that Jesus took upon himself our shame. He bore our contempt. He took the weight of our iniquity, the ways that you and I were living for ourselves, trying to do our own way, thriving in anonymity and distance from God and praying that the light would never come. Jesus took that darkness down into the grave and he buried it there. You don't need to live under the weight of it any longer. You can trade your darkness for his light. The God who spoke light out of darkness wants to speak his light into your darkness in Christ (coughs) in the face of his risen son. Maybe for others of us, you might not be like that person per se, but maybe you're the cynic. Maybe you're kind of someone who's kind of found yourself at a spot of going like, dude, Darkness is all there is, man. The power's never coming back on. The light doesn't even exist out there anymore. And, and so you're not like trying to get everything you can for yourself, but you've just kind of given up hope that the light is ever coming. And you find yourself dejected and sitting in the shadows and going, man, I'm still gonna try and live an upright life, gonna try and live a moral life, gonna try and do whatever, but all I can really rely on is myself because God ain't out there. Other people, no one's out there. No one can look out for me but me. And all I have to rely on is my own internal resources. That is another way of being a person of the dark, is no longer believing that the light exists. But the light has come, and don't be like that person putting the pillow over the head when the light is kind of streaming through the windows and the sun has come up, and you're going, man, it's dark in here. It's like, that's because you got the pillow on your head. Take it off. Come on out. Jesus is risen. The sun is alive and he is beautiful. It is beautiful. There is light and there is life that has come. And no matter how dark the world gets, light is coming. It does not have the last word on your story or on mine or on the story of our world. The reality is that we get to be, Easter means you can be a person of the light, to be a person of the light, like a a survivor in that blackout who is going, man, I know it's dark right now, but I know that light is coming, that the power is going to come back on, that resurrection is on its way. And that means that you can hold on to hope. Now, the reality is, I don't know the darkness that you're in right now. I don't know what you've got to go back to when the holiday's over and Monday morning comes and the things that you are in the midst of, but I do know what my grandpa always said to me growing up, and so I knew he had been through some hard times, and he would always tell me, Josh, it's always darkest before the dawn. What he was saying is, no matter how dark it gets, dawn is coming. And when it feels the darkest, look up, lift your eyes to the risen sun because Jesus is alive and his light is coming. You can find solace in him right now. You can find comfort in him right now because he is not in the tomb. He is resurrected and exalted over all of heaven and earth and he pours out his spirit. He is present with you and for you and to you, offering his light and his life for you and with you today. And no matter how dark it gets, darkness does not have the last word. The light does. His resurrection means, his resurrection means that death does not have the last word. Life does. Jesus, the risen son, means that the enemies that are hanging over your head, they do not have the last word on your life. Jesus does. Jesus will. Jesus is alive and he is coming. The light has come and it is coming and God is with you and for you in Christ, his risen son. And I wonder 
what Jesus is doing right now. How many of you wonder? Hey, everyone, what's Jesus up to right now? What's, if he's alive, where's he at? What is he doing? The gospel says he is risen and ascended to the right hand of the Father, and there he is interceding for us. He is praying for you and for I. And you want to know what he's praying for us this morning? He's saying, do it again, Dad. Do it again. He is asking his Father, do it again in my people. Do it again in you. Jesus is praying that God would shine his resurrected life on you, Jesse, and on you, Marco, and on on you, Jose, and on you, Abby. Shine my light on you and on you and on you and on you. Do it again, Father. Do it again. This Easter, I want to invite you to join me, and more than that, to join Jesus in that prayer, that God would do that again in us. Would you join me? In prayer. Jesus, you are the victorious light of the world. We thank you, God, that you who said, let light shine out of darkness have made the light to shine again in Jesus, your victorious risen son. And we pray now that you would do it again in us, God, that you would transform us, that you would shine the light of the risen Jesus afresh upon our hearts, Lord. Pray for every person in this room, Holy Spirit, would you warm their affections with the light and the glow and the radiance of the glory of Jesus. God, we lift our eyes to you. We want to see the light of the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. We look to you, Holy Spirit, transform our affections. Make us a person, a people of worship, God, who worship you above all else. And God, we pray that when the darkness feels strong, I pray for any right now who are just feeling under the weight of the darkness, maybe those who have been living for themselves in the midst of the darkness, God, would you trade, we want to trade our darkness for your light, Jesus. We want to hand that over to you and receive your light, you, you bore the darkness of the cross. You buried it in the grave. And now you offer your radiance for us. Would you? We want to receive that. If that's you this morning, I want to invite you to just pray under your breath before God, Jesus, do it again in me. Shine your light in me. Let me be one of those with a story to tell of transformation of how your light, your Easter resurrection, victorious light has broken through the darkness in my life. Maybe for others, if you're one of those who's maybe felt cynical or you've just seen so much darkness, you don't know that you can believe the light exists anymore. Jesus, do it again. I want to invite you to pray, do it again in me, Jesus. Pull the pillow off and Jesus, you are alive, you are shining. Holy Spirit, minister the radiance, the glory of Christ to any of those in that spot this morning. And And for all of us, Lord, we want to be an Easter people, a resurrection people who live in the reality that your light has come and your light is coming. So make us a people of the light, God. A people who live in and from and for the radiance of your glory, Jesus. Father, we praise you that you raised your son up from the darkness and you're out to raise us too. You're out to do it again in me and us. And so we worship you. We declare, Jesus, your name is so beautiful. You who are the light of the world. We look to you and worship you. We give you our heart, our songs, our affection, our devotion, because death could not hold you. Lord, you broke the power of darkness, and now you have the power to break every chain and to bring us into the freedom and light of the glory of God. Jesus, it's in your mighty name, And for your glory, the victorious light of the world that we pray. Amen.